Well, good morning. We're looking at the third commandment today, and it talks about God's name. And names are important, aren't they? Most names nowadays are chosen because they sound nice. Or if you're a celebrity, uh, you give your child a ridiculous name to make a statement. My name is Dalan, which means from the sea or prince of the waves. I've got the swimming ability of a brick, so it doesn't really make sense, but it sounds nice when people say it right anyway, Dalan. Uh, the third commandment is about the name of God. It says, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Now, God's given ten commandments, just ten, the ten most important rules for us to live by. And he includes this. I mean, nowadays, we've often reduced this command to mean don't use God's name as a swear word. Now, that in itself is serious, but this commandment means so much more than that. Like we uh, mentioned uh, before, names are important. Your identity is often wrapped around your name. But God's name is, is even more important than that. He gave it to himself. It's a description of who he is. It's not just what we call him, but what we are saying about him. The name Yahweh, which was given uh, by God to Moses at the burning bush, means I am. It speaks of God's existence outside of time, his constant presence, his self-sufficiency. If we stop right there and just think for a second at the fact that God has given us his name, the God who created everything, sustains everything, and has chosen us in order to be his people, has given us his name for us to be able to pray to him and to speak to him and refer to him. That's amazing in itself. So it's only right, isn't it, that we treat his name with reverence. And it's not just here where the name of God is seen to be important. Remember the words of the Lord's Prayer? Hallowed be your name. Jesus wants his Father's name to be set apart, to be given the praise it deserves. Or think of Philippians where it says, At the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. God's name is more than just his name. It encompasses who he is. So how do we obey this law? Practically speaking, on Tuesday 16th of June 2020, how does this rule apply? Well, with our words, we do indeed break the law of God when we use his name as a swear word. And when we're angry or surprised, it is an insult to drag God's name into our exclamations and our frustrations. How dare we use uh, his glorious name as something to shout if we see an amazing goal or if we hit our thumb with a hammer? We shouldn't use God's name for those occasions. But it's also when we make promises and we use God's name. I swear to God, you shouldn't bring God into it. Let your yes be yes and your no's be no's. Or how about when we accuse God of something? It's all God's fault. God hates me. We're bringing his name into disrepute. Or when we use God's name to push our own agenda. God wants this for our country. God wants this for me. God wants this for the church. God would want us to vote for this candidate. I know of, of one friend who has been told, uh, God wants me to marry you. Uh, she's been told that by two different men, neither of which she ended up marrying. We should never attach God's name to something that is false, uh, to something which does not bring him glory. We should also uh, consider the fact that we now as Christians bear his name. We are of Christ. So we bear the family name. And just like a father who finds his son has been playing up in school and says to him, you've brought shame upon the family name. We take the Lord's name in vain when we as Christians act in a way which doesn't reflect Christ. We as Christians are called to be different, to be set apart from the rest of the world. And if we're prone to violence, hatred, pride, drunkenness, greed and laziness, then we're not presenting the world with the Christ we claim to follow. Ultimately, this command reminds us of how we come to Jesus. Romans 10 says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. It goes on to say, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I think that possibly the, the main way in which we can break this command is by not calling on the name of the Lord. Unlike my own name, which it doesn't suit me at all when you think about the meaning, the name of Jesus literally means to rescue. So if we don't call on him, if we reject him daily, we are rejecting the one who gave up the glory of heaven, the one who took on flesh, who was mocked, ridiculed, put to death, only to rise again. If you call upon his name, if you cry out to him saying you need his help, then he will save you. Will you call upon the one who saves today?